This is part two in our series of lectures on section 4.5 dealing with images and inverse images of sets. In this lecture we discuss an example involving an image of a set and in the next lecture we'll do an example involving inverse image of a set. So uh, let's consider the following function. It's the function from the reals to the reals given by uh, f of x is equal to x squared plus 1. It's pretty easy to calculate the image of various subsets of the reals um, because we can draw a picture of what the function looks like and we can actually see what these images are. So let's use the graph of f to come up with the image of the closed interval from 1 to 3 and the image of the closed interval from minus 1 to 1. Oh, it appears that I've left out a round parenthesis here. Excuse me. Little typo. Well, let's start by drawing the graph of this function. f of x equals x squared plus 1, so that looks like this. f of x equals x squared plus 1. And we want to know, first of all, what is f of uh, 1, 3? What is the image of the set 1, 3? And um, so that means we need to take all of the f of x's as x goes from 1 to 3. So if you just look back at the graph, say 1 is here, 3 is here, and um, if you just look at the values on the graph from 1 to 3, that gives you all of these points on the graph, and the corresponding y values go from here up to here. So the lowest one corresponds to the height f of 1 and the highest to f of 3 because from the picture it's clear that the function is increasing. Now f of 1 is equal to 2 and f of 3 is equal to 10. The, um, so 2 is the height here, 10 is the height here and it's clear that we get everything in between and nothing more when we take the image and therefore the image must be the interval from 2 to 10, the closed interval from 2 to 10. Now let's do the other one. The other one was um, the image of min the interval minus 1 to 1. So let's draw the graph again. Say so here's minus 1, here's plus 1. And so we're interested in all of these heights on the graph as x ranges from minus 1 to 1 and so it appears that the height seem to go from this height up to this height namely f of 1 um, so th those seem to be the heights that we're interested in and so we have to calculate f of 1 is equal to um, x squared plus 1 is 2 and f of 0 is 1 and therefore the image of the interval minus 1 to 1 is according to this picture it seems to be the closed interval from 1 to 2. So those are the results. Okay so we deduced from the picture that f of 1 3 the image of 1 3 is 2 10 and the image of minus 1 1 is the interval from 1 to 2. But that's a picture, and even though we know in our heart that that's what the answer has to be, we should still be able to write a formal proof using only working definitions. If anything, it's a good exercise in writing up proofs and working with working definitions. So let's just do one of them. Here's our function, f. It maps x to x squared plus 1. It maps the real numbers into the real numbers. And I want to write a formal proof that the image of minus 1, 1 is equal to 1, 2. So let me just recall for you the working definition. If you have a function from set A to set B, in this case it's from R into R. And if you give yourself a subset X of A, in this case it's going to be the closed interval from minus 1 to 1, then the image of X, in other words F of this set, it's the set of all Y in the, um, in the codomain, in this case R, such that there exists an X in x, in other words, in this interval minus 1 to 1, 
such that y is equal to that f of x. So what we need to do is we need to use that working definition um, and of course also the working definition of this closed interval and this closed interval to prove that this set is equal to this set. So that means that we'll have two paragraphs. In the first paragraph we'll prove that this is a subset of this and in the second we'll prove that this is a subset of this. So you have to begin by taking an element of this set. So that means it's an element of the image of this and so that means it's a certain y value, it's a y value in R such that there exists an x in here, there exists an x between minus 1 and 1 such that y is equal to f of x. And then you'll have to prove that that y is necessarily between 1 and 2 and um, so that's something that you should try to do because of course we have this explicit formula for, for f. And then conversely if you start with a a y between 1 and 2, you're going to have to show it's in here, which means you're going to have to produce an x in this set such that that y is equal to f of x. So that's your task to prove in proving this, and uh, why don't you put your video on pause and see if you can write a formal proof. Okay, so here's my proof, and let's just look at the skeleton first. I begin by picking a y in this set here, and ultimately it appears that I'm able to prove that y is in the right-hand side. And then in the second paragraph, I take a y in the right-hand side, and ultimately I'm able to prove that it's in the left-hand side. Okay, so let's look at the details. Let y be in f of minus 1, 1. So according to our working definition, it means this. It means that there exists an x in minus 1 to 1 such that y is equal to f of x or x squared plus 1. Now I have to prove to you that y lies between 1 and 2. But since x lies between minus 1 and 1, that means absolute x lies between 0 and 1. So when I square it, that's the same as just doing x squared, that will be between 0 squared and 1 squared, 0 and 1, and then when I add 1 to that, I get a quantity that's between 1 and 2, and therefore y is between 1 and 2. And so that proves this inclusion. Conversely, let's take a y in the other side. It's in uh, the right-hand side. That means y lies between 1 and 2. Um, and so ultimately what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick my x to be the square root of y minus 1. So I'll have to prove for that x that two things happen. One is I'll have to convince myself that it lies between minus 1 and 1, and I'll have to convince myself that one, when I take f of it, I get y. So, in order to show that it lies between minus 1 and 1, that's what I'm doing here. Um, since y lies between 1 and 2, that means y minus 1 lies between 0 and 1, and therefore its square root lies between 0 and 1. So now I explain how to choose my x. I choose x to be root y minus 1. Then I've just shown that it lies in this interval because it lies between 0 and 1. Um, so it lies in this interval, and I'll be done if I can finally prove that f of it is equal to y. Well, f of it is equal to x squared plus 1. That's when you square this, you get back y minus 1 and uh, adding 1 to that I get back y. And that proves that y is an element of this. Why? Because I've shown that I can choose an x that lies between minus 1 and 1 for which y is equal to f of x. Okay, so that proves we have this inclusion and um, that completes the proof.